Alright guys, welcome back. I'm your friend in Saxo. And for today's video, we're going to learn a new technique called Marius. You know, in our lives in the world of programmers, there are always some new techniques that we have to learn so that we could use them to build some applications that could fit the modern society's needs. And what I'm about to learn is also the same. It's related to the cryptocurrency world. Uh, why I have to learn this? Well, it's just because we in the end will definitely need some financial support otherwise we couldn't su sustain our life or um, banish our dream because all those things will require the money all right that's why I know this so let's go on build a simple decentralized application inside of three minutes the setup part one it goes so fast to build um marios oh this is a strange land marales in this guide we'll show you how easy it is to get a simple decentralized app up and running are you ready let's go so we at first need to create a free marionius account so we're gonna go to this website and register a free account and we do that we're gonna Click the sign up button, then we're gonna input the email address that we have. Then we're gonna hit the next, then it will ask, ask for us some information about us. So let's create our account. We're gonna save that password. From there, we could create our new server. So it's kind of like a serverless service where we could use our service to build some big application without to manually configure the backend side so that every front end developer could build their software and distribute their application to their users directly without worry too much of things. So after we have a free account, what's the next step? We're gonna create a new Marilis server. Marilis. Marilis. Repeat with me. Mar Marilis. Okay, that's it. Create a new Mar Marilis server. And basically we get three options out of here. Which we, which one we wanna choose? Well, we could, we could choose the Ethernet, but the transformation fee would be quite high, so that's not an option. Then we also could choose the BS say the Binance chain well the transfer fee for this chain is not that expensive but I guess it's a centralized uh, chain where if the Binance wanna prevent us to um, publish or decentralized application I guess they could so which we'll is the polygon for this case so I just to create a new service or not I don't know oh we we need to do that so let's collect this one and here we are basically three options out there I just create a test night server Alright, then we could do a choose. We're gonna give it an instance land. That'll be test the polygon. Then the region for that service, there has no China or something like that. I guess I'll just choose the Singapore. Um, here we go. I'm gonna choose the polygon right in here. Then we hit the add instance button. Okay, it's in the processing. We're gonna view the detail and you say all those information about this service. Great. Now let's go back to the tutorial. So how can we include the Morales on our HTML code? In order to communicate with the Morales server, we need to include include the Marinus code in our D app. Open your favorite text editor. We recommend the Visual Studio code with the live server extension to make the running of the web page super easy. Let's create a new file called index.html and copy the following code. So do we have to follow this tutorial? Yes, I guess. So let me just create a new folder. And now we got a Marinus test folder. What's the next? We're gonna create an HTML code, index.html. And from there, we try to copy all those code in. Here we go. We get this right in here. And we will also need the live server according to the documents. It says that if we had the go live button, it will generally serve that HTML code for us. That's cool. Let's go on. Copy the mirrorless server URL and application ID. Once the server instance has been created, bend your mirrorless server URL and application ID and paste them into the script tag where indicated. So Here's how it looks like. We got the server URL and we also got the, the application ID. Let's go on. From there, we can view our service detail and we got our application ID or maybe the service ID here. Let me just copy that. Then we're gonna pass it into here. Then the application ID, just pass it in here. And we're almost done. Let's say, what can we do right now? Congratulations, you made it. Your server is up and running. Keep going. Next up is part two, where we know how to log in with 
use MetaMask. How? It says that we have this set it up, but if I click the login button, nothing happens. So we're gonna go to the next part. So how to log in with with the MetaMask? Install the MetaMask if you haven't already installed it on your computer. It is the following code to the script tag below the Marinas code. All right, for this case, I have already installed the MetaMask extension for the Charm Brother. If you didn't have it installed on your computer, you have to do this by yourself. And if you don't know how to do it, just Google it. Guys, you can do it. I believe in you. So for the next step, let's just copy this code and paste it in here. I see what we have. We got a function called login. From there, we can get the user from the Marinus user that currents. And if if that user doesn't exist, then we will ask the, the library to do an authentication, which is to call the MetaMask extension on our browser. And after that, we should be logged in. And also, we got a logout function where we call the logout function of that library. And what we did next is to assign the two function to the button. We bound those functions to the two buttons, which is this login button and this logout button. All right now, let me do a test. If I had this login button, well, you say that it's actually called the MetaMask extension, which is cool. So I'm gonna hit the next button and hit the connect and hit the sign button. Here we go, we just logged in. And what if we want to log out? We can hit the logout button for sure. But I guess most of the time it's not necessary. Oh, if we want to get some details about the login, we could go to the cancel where we hit the login button again and hit the sign. After that, we should get some information about the current user, something like this. But that's not important at all. So far, what we did is to do some operations about the user, especially for the login and the logout, which is two um, basic part for an application. Then we're gonna go to the next part, historical transactions part three. How to get historical data? So far, we only have the user available but we need to do some operations with this user for example to do a check about his historical transactions of the, of his money so how can we do that first we're gonna get that user i'm gonna call some functions for example query the internet transactions but before we do anything let's add a new button to our html code here we go, now we got a new button and then we're going to create a function to query the data for the user It can be as simple as first we get the user object, then if that user is logged in, we get his transactions. And how we do that? We say new mirrors that query is the transactions that query equal to phone address and whatever. This must be a function, but I don't know the meaning for it right now. But that's okay, let's try it out. So now if I hit this refresh status button, we get basically nothing, an empty array. That's fair enough because I didn't have any transaction yet. And I guess this line of code, what it does is to do a fair train. So what we need to know from this code is that it has a from address and to address. And to the to address is the user's address. So by doing so, we could get the transactions related to the to address only. And we run that query command by using this line of code and finally we get the results back simple but we didn't done yet let's go to the next part so far what we did is to get those historical data but those things are just happening on the background you didn't know when it is finished or when it is started by only using that kind of function that database is not enough we're gonna have some real-time scene for example how to get the real-time data not only can we get all past the transactions but we can also get notifications when new transactions happen. Just subscribe to the query. For example, const subscription equal to await query dot subscribe. And then we add a handler to that event. For example, when a transaction has been created, then we print it out. By doing so, we could monitor the transactions when it is happening in real time. Okay, that was simple. Then let's go to the next one. Build an application with the cloud functions. Average gas fee. To calculate average gas prices for for users, we need to create a cloud function on the Marius server and then call that function from a D application. Create a cloud function. Marius.cloud that define get average gas. This is a function. Then, then we give it an asynchronous function. And to be honest, I don't know why we need to use a cloud function to get the gas price. I have no idea about that. Well, maybe it's because of the security reason. Because it is dangerous to put your core code or core part of your code on the 
user's machine since they can easily do some modifications about it. But if you run your code on the server, it will be more secure. And by using this machinizing or this library, it's not a difficult thing to do that. Where you just have to define it with a corresponding name, then you use that corresponding name to call your cloud cloud function. By doing so, you will have it running. So that's it guys. Congratulations, you have successfully created your first Marilis application. That's a lot. And the next step for you to do is to read all those documents about this packaging. Then you use it to create the next generation D application. Good luck. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.